of Devas. This great meet to showcase the women power and as if to symbolize that, our very, very beloved guest who symbolizes indeed women and power, Lieutenant Governor Kiran Bedi ji from Puducherry. Welcome you, Madam, on behalf of all of us. I believe that because of her august and esteemed presence here, Namami me manasa siraza nada tanumani shankaram Namami me manasa siraza nada tanumani And in particular, thanks to um, uh, Madam Kiran Bedi, who uh, is our chief guest, who is the lieutenant, um, you know, governor of Puducherry. We have been trying to um, connect with her and get her here for the past three divas occasions. Something or the other, our paths have been crossing. So I'm so immensely grateful for your presence here today. Um, the, when, as soon as you mention the name Kiran Bedi, the image that everyone has is this incredibly powerful woman, woman of valor, woman of integrity, and woman who's an activist. And, and that's why we salute you, Madam. Thank you for inviting me and for giving me such a wonderful opportunity to be amidst you. I want to thank the following for making this happen for me. Dr. Usha Sriram, who's the founder of Divas. What an impressive doctor she is. My friend Shivani Arora tells me what a dear doctor she is to thousands and thousands. Dr. Lalitha Balakrishnan, who's a principal of the MOP Vaishnav, Vaishnav College, right? Girija, Dr. Girija Vedanathan, the former chief secretary, Tamil Nadu, whom I've had the opportunity to interact and meet with. Dr. Hema Devakar, the, and my friend Shivani Arora, due to which I'm absolutely here with you, a very dear old friend, a writer and a journalist, who's with her mother here, who's my very special guest at Rajnevas always. So grateful that she's also present here. Many eminent doctors, eminent doctors who are present amidst most of you and friends. Yes, that's true that somehow I missed divas for the last two years for something happened which had to be attended first. It's something like urgent and important. So one has to make, cho make choices in life what is urgent and important. Today it was both. This was urgent and important for me and I'm so happy that I could make it. You're talking about diabetes. You're talking about health. You're talking about health of women. To my mind, health is the best blessing nature gives us. Because all, everything follows health. Wealth doesn't follow health. Health, it's health, it's wealth which follows health. It's not wealth which only brings you health. Therefore, if we value health as the most precious blessing of divinity, then one would move much more into preventive health. And I'm a believer in power of prevention. One must do anything possible to prevent, prevent the, um, the wolves at the door. It's like any disease is a wolf at your doorstep. So whatever one can do to prevent because there is a percentage where you may prevent and yet it comes to you. Something like coming through the DNA, where you can't do much except to continue to treat it. It's like exactly what Dr. Usha Sriram said, something which is inherited through the womb of the mother or which comes through the genes or come through the DNA. Until the science is able to isolate that gene 
of ill health, we will continue to inherit some things which we as children or children in the wombs may not be able to prevent. So friends, let us prevent whatever we can and then let the science work its hardest to treat it and somehow isolate that gene so that the child who's born is born healthy. We've all gone through our own families. It's a healthy mother which produces a healthy child. But it's also a healthy father who produces a healthy child. And I've seen in many, many places when I give away some prizes at places and I find very tall, tall people. And at another places, I see people half as short as I am, you know, short, short people. And I start wonder, wondering where did this health, this height come from? Well, it came from the genes. And also healthy parents where the mother and the father both tall, they produce normally a very tall child. At all, and you see it either coming from the mother or the father. And when both are tall, they produce basketball players or they produce tennis champions who can hit the ball and get an ace in the service. But those of us who were born short had a short mother and a short father. And where did that height come from? It also came through the genes. So, friends, what we inherit probably is 10%. But 90%, as research says, is self-called for, which is called calling the wolf at the door. To my mind, the key to, key to good health is primary prevention. And primary prevention times goes back to your personal management. It's personal management, which is the primary prevention. And what is personal management? It starts from the top till the bottom. It starts from the head to the toe. It starts from the head and as you travel within and without, it's, it is primary health prevention. Now, when I say you and it tops from the bottom, I have two instances to give you. Science establishes that 90% we call for, we are responsible for our own acts. 10%, 10% is, is nature sent. For instance, Chennai water situation. Let's look at Chennai water situation. Chennai water situation probably is 90% man-made and 10% nature said. Similarly is health or anywhere. Now, since we are in Chennai, and I know I've got a lot of flack for saying this, but the fact is that's a fact of the matter. And we're sitting right before is 90% is man-made when we cover up our water bodies, build construction in it, choke it up, not clean it up and let it be and not do any water harvesting and think we can, the water will be enough for everybody. That's 90% man-made. Similarly is health. 90% is our generated, 10% is gene generated. So if 90% of us prevent and do whatever, we, whatever it takes, what does it take? It takes is another 90%. It's, it's a called 10, 1090 formula where I heard a particular discourse in a, in a very nice uh, spiritual session where that discourse speaker said something, and he was from Pune, and he said that we focus more on this 10%. We clean it up, we go to a beautician, and we get it all groomed very well, and we also dress it up very well, we also comb our hair very well, we uh, shampoo them well, and then we also do a lovely, interesting makeup, though there's none on my face right now. But they, we, it's a makeup to look very bright because we all want to look beautiful. But then we forget the 90% below. And 90% below is hidden. Whether we're wearing fresh clothes within, or it's nourished and massaged as a body, or what's gone inside the stomach, whether it was good for me or excess sugar, excess sugar, or excess food, which makes me put on weight, it's a 90%. So 10% is this, but this within the 10% is something hidden within, which is the thoughts, the mind, which just decides and dictates the body. So it's a 90-10 formula. 90-10 formula is 90% we are responsible for our own acts of commission or omission, and 10% are nature sent. In the other hand, when it comes to internal health issues, it is 10% which gets our attention, but 90% doesn't get as much attention as what we feed or what we do with our body, 
how do we how do we discipline ourselves to maintain good health so friends if we all work on this nine understand this 9010 and also the 1090 i think we could keep the wolf away from the door but if we don't and if we go the other way around then wolf we always be at the doorstep 10% it happens it happened in my in my own family my sister younger sister brilliant a uh, psychologist of international repute at at the age of 60 i just picked got a phone call and she says she's been detected with breast cancer and and she was one of the most disciplined person you could come with she fell in that 10% category a most disciplined person who would eat nothing wrong who would think nothing wrong who would do nothing wrong except serve the people in need a one of the purest thinking human being who for who her life was very value based most clean most hygienic and very very personally disciplined in every way from mind to thought to food and yet she fell into the 10% category because by the time it was detected as it's always said in medical if you i wish it could have been detected early just one year she mixed her medical checkup one year by the time the breast thing had cancelled through the lymph nodes and for three years she struggled for her life i believe tomorrow is sisterhood day or today is on the eve of sisterhood this is what happens and the and this problem and this disease was not at all in our family all family of sports sports would start disciplined way from the big from the beginning till the end a sports champion in her own rights so friends there is a 1090 if we all value and understand in our life once we do follow this a personal discipline follows then we look at uh, at ourselves from what are we thinking what are we doing what are we eating where are we sitting who are we working with i recall one of my very important uh, very interesting award winning ceremony i was invited to bombay and said come and receive this remarkable award i won't mention the name of the award and friends i went up on the stage but the noise in the whole auditorium was so loud so loud that i couldn't just stay on it started to thump on my head i asked myself what is more important receiving this award or my own health here and friends i walked away from that award saying i want to thank you very much but i can't take it any more because my head is started to pound the noise is just too much now these are decisions one makes in certain times where it may be offensive but after all you owe good health to your own self nobody else you can't borrow good health from another but you can look after your own self so i it's like coal to the castle i don't want to bring coal to the castle you are the experts in this field i just live a personally disciplined life and yet you never know when that 10% strikes but 90% is i eat right the rajnivas is full of good food but i eat very little large nevas has lot of comfort but i put myself into stress in the time it's positive energy it's exercise is watching nature being with the birds and getting back to work without any selfish interests without any loss of personal integrity continue to serve so friends once you live a life of that 90 10 and give 90 of yourself let the 10 if 10 happens well it had to happen you can't help it but if it happens then doctors like you are there to serve you, to look after you and bring you back to good health so friends i want to thank you once again for bringing me to this much awaited event i want to thank once again dr usha shriram for a, for being so kind in in your introduction and being such a good doctor of repute and dr balakrishnan girija vadyanathan dr hema devakar most of all my friend shivani and her mother's presence wish you all very well may you all succeed in this collective effort of divas what a wonderful forum it is to and you write polio is gone hiv is come under control why can't we look why can't we let this this issue also one day be absolutely minimized and at i recall one of my author of a book one day he was working on on the book and he says ma'am mujhe diabetes ho gaya to so he says ma'am ab main roz subah 4 baje uthta hu look what he did and i met him again he is zero diabetes he is zero diabetes he immediately was alerted he he was detected as diabetes 
4.30 he's on the walk track. He doesn't take anything out of the time of the schedule of eating. The personal discipline he follows as a regime because he got so scared of this to, to let it uh, grow. He was so close to his family. He didn't want his daughter to ever think that mother, father has diabetes. Gets up at 4.35, out on the running track, exercises after that, doesn't eat anything out of time. He doesn't, um, uh, he keeps a regular schedule. He goes to bed early. He is so disciplined that he, when I met him last, about a few weeks ago, he said, ma'am, I have no diabetes. Whatever I would offer him, he wouldn't eat. He said, nah, he wouldn't take tea, necess tea, anything or anything. He would not take, and I didn't even force it, because that's the right thing to do. If he doesn't want anything, why put it in, in which it doesn't go? So friends, it can be prevented, but it requires a regime of absolute discipline. I have a case which is personally heard, and I was thrilled when he said that he's diabetes free only because of his strict discipline. Even I have a personal, uh, uh, OS officer in special duty, a very person, the uh, NIS retired, who also was detected to do a lot of stress at work. He was regularly went to a fitness schedule, ate correctly, and lived correctly. And today he's also absolutely got the mastery over his own disease. So I do believe this is one, dis one issue which can be overcome and which can be surmounted. As I said, the last 10 percent, detect it early, prevent it early, or control it early. You have to keep away from goodies of chocolates, of, of uh, rasgullas, of jalebis, and so many other things. They're very delicious, but they can wait. They can go. They can be for others, but not for us. Those who can afford, but we can't. Let it be. But even for those who've not got diabetes, even then it's not meant for us. I can't eat a jalebi, even a pakora in a whole year. In a whole year, I don't think I've eaten a jalebi or a pakora or anything for a whole year. Whole year. It's just right there before me. I offer it to others who want to eat, but I never force anybody to eat. If you come to my home, I'll offer you, but if you say no, I'll never say no, eat. No, I will not, because I respect your right to say no to food which you don't want. That's all, all, all this about. I think it's all about personal choices what kind of lifestyle one wants to lead, what kind of energy one wants to build, what kind of contribution one wants to make society, because without good health, you cannot do this. So thank you very much once again, friends, for inviting me here today. And wish you all divas the very best. Thank you.